Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the instant match reaction. Chelsea 6, Everton 0. Um, what a horrendous night. What an absolutely horrendous night. A lot of... Lot of um, Lots of lot of positivity around a little bit earlier about this game, uh, about you know maybe being able to get something out of it. You know Chelsea don't keep clean sheets. Sheets, uh, they do score goals, but they don't keep loads of clean sheets. Will Everton managed to um, put that to bed, didn't he tonight in their performance? Uh, and what a horrendous performance it was too. Um, yeah, it's just. I'm sure as I go along, I'll get a little bit more animated. It's like caffeine to me. This <laughs> at first, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit groggy and I'm a little bit tired by it. But I'm sure as I go along, I'll start waking up a little bit. Um, I, I I think from the start, I think the the the, the manager got the the. Um, style completely wrong personally i think he he um we were far too aggressive when we didn't have to be aggressive i thought we came out and even though we looked it looked sort of promising in the early five minutes or so i thought we were just far too aggressive in our pressing and it just allowed for a almost like a basketball style game um early on and there was only ever going to be one winner of that because we don't score goals and they've got quality players we left it we left the pitch wide open for them we were chasing shadows because our players don't know how to press i said this last week when when mcneil's running after players and people think it's fucking brilliant when it's not um you press as a team properly or not at all you get your men behind the ball and we didn't and I don't understand why the manager did that tonight. And before you know it, we're 4 0 down. Because the manager thought it'd be a clever idea to go chasing after the ball all around the pitch when we are second to every ball. And when we get on the ball, we are useless on it. Um, and that showed because we were terrible everywhere. You know, people who typically have half decent games or are good players like. Jared Brantwaite suddenly looked like absolute amateurs. Um, players with a bit of positional sense started looking so far off their depth, it was incredible. And we were showing up all over the pitch tonight, certainly in that first half. And it was absolutely embarrassing to, to watch. And it felt like the players didn't truly believe what, what they were being asked to do. And then that leads to mistakes. That leads to stupid mistakes like Jordan Pickford's. Um, that maybe we wouldn't, you know, don't always happen. Or someone like James Garner having an absolutely abysmal game. Or or Jared Brantwaite having an absolutely abysmal game. Or James Tarkowski thinking he's the fucking Terminator running around after people trying to boot them instead of just defending like a normal person. Um and, and it, you could see it everywhere, all over the pitch. Just players were just crumbling under the pressure. You could see it. And Tarkowski's a brilliant one, actually. Because you could just see his head going. You could see his head. The penalty they got, no, he didn't give away the penalty. But just watch his forearm. Watch where his forearm is. He smashes the lad in the face. He gets booked for something in their half where he just wanted to boot something. That's our vice captain doing that. You know, what kind of example does that set for for other players? We just lost the plot and I completely lost the plot in what we were doing. And that comes from me from the setup. That comes from that comes from having a terrible approach to the game. And it was all of them all of them just didn't have a clue just didn't have a clue what they were doing tonight and were just you know, the first goal you know, Brantwaite getting done with the with the nutmeg and then and then O'Nana not tracking back. Um Tarky not following runners and and he bends it round. You know, every single one of the players tonight, um was it the set the second goal we've allowed the player to get out of the corner and then he's not being tracked and and you know James Garner's gave up a fifty fifty. You know, O'Nana's given up fifty fifties. 
and we're doing that all over the pitch. And because we are a because we are a dreadful team who can't play football, when you lose fifty fifties, it just looks even worse. And that's the I mean, that's because the problem is that we are such a dreadful football team. Like literally, we are a dreadful football team, and I don't think I'm going overboard in this. I think lots of people will agree with me on this. We are dreadful. Like, what is the style of play? What are we trying to accomplish with what? With what? You know, it it looks like throw a ball into the box and win the first ball, and that's it. That's our only way of scoring goals. And yes, we've we've we come close like maybe a couple of times in the game, but how far does that get you with professional football anymore? You know, Chelsea was seen as not a haven't been a particularly good side this season and is seen as a bit of a seen as a basket case and we saw that when they had the penalty. Like that's Chelsea and Chelsea 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 in a nutshell, isn't it? That attitude of four players fighting over a ball. Um when when you when you're trying to score your fifth goal, that's their attitude. We don't even have that attitude in general play. <laughs> I mean, it's just it really is hard to see what what we're trying to do as a team, um, football and wise. Before we even talk about anything else, the football is just it's it's it's. It it goes back to a to an old style of football that would get you get you out of trouble or you know give you a certain level of success. And now everybody's trying to play football, and the problem is is that anyone who's watched us this season, that's not the first time you've seen that kind of football. Um, we've all. We've all even people. We walked out of Burnley last week, and the amount of people that I spoke to last week after Burnley and said they were more worried after Burnley than they were before it because of the manner of the way we played and the manner of the way we played when we were down to ten men. Um, and it just continued tonight. Since we went, since since we went to Portugal, it's been farcical how bad how bad we've been um since coming back football wise you know other than half an hour at newcastle um the way he sets us up is just embarrassing absolutely embarrassing you know there's no football i mean ashley, ashley young i don't know sure if ashley young got a kick tonight i'm not sure if mcneil got a kick tonight um you know, there's a couple of moments in the game where we've, you know, obviously Beto should do better um, off Coleman's run, and that was probably the best bit of play we've had for a while. Never mind just tonight, but Beto's not a not a particularly good footballer, so wasn't surprised to see it go over the bar. But the attitudes to me as well, the attitudes just stunk the place out all over the pitch tonight. All of them, their attitudes. As I mentioned, Taki just going around trying to boot people. Um, just players giving up all over the pitch. And it only, you know, if players don't believe in what they're doing or don't believe in what they're giving or what the manager's asking them to do, then I don't. that's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to get. Um, you know, I've heard loads of people defend Dice all season. You know, I got a little bit of stick early on in the season about what I said after the Arsenal game, but I don't know how anyone can defend that football. I don't know how anyone can defend that. You are down to the last seven, is it seven games of the season or whatever it is, and we're watching football like that. We haven't come on at all this season. We haven't moved forward in terms of a style. You watch teams progress over a season. Um, you watch them get better and play a style of play and 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 understand what they're trying to play. I I don't understand what we're trying to do. 
I really don't understand what we're trying to do as a, as a team. I don't know what the what what I don't know where anything comes from. I don't know where their creativity is supposed to come from. I don't know where the the goals are supposed to come from. Like I said earlier, we're trying to take on Chelsea in a almost like in a basketball match, and how can you do that when you know they're going to score goals and we don't? And people will defend Dice. The people will say, "Look at what he's got. Look at how his hands are tied and all this." I get that. I get that the players aren't particularly good, and I agree that the players aren't particularly good. I have no issue with that. But you've still got to have a way of playing football. You've still got to try and play football in in one particular way. And whatever that way is, stick to it. I I don't understand what, what, what we're trying to do. I don't understand the football we're trying to play. And I haven't for a, for a very long time. Because we've just con- we're supposed to be good at the back. And we've just conceded um, six goals. Where and they haven't done any. Chelsea haven't done anything amazing to score those six goals. They're all they're all quite basic, basic goals. They haven't cut us open like some unbelievable football team. They've worked hard for those goals, and they've worked harder than us. As I said, losing fifty fifties on the edge of your box. You're not not dealing with not dealing with pressure, not dealing with pace. And and honestly, I I just feel like we're in. It feels like it feels like when we played Burnley two seasons ago. Ironically enough, when you watch the game and obviously Dyche was on the other side of it, and he said we didn't know how to win. Um, it feels a bit like that because I just look at that game and think. How are we? How are we? How do we bounce back? We've got a big week, and loads of people will come out with all the sound bites. But these are the same people that are letting us down week in and week out. You know, they can come out and say things like, "Oh, you know, we need to do this, or we need to just stick with us." But I mean, Ever- oh, Evertonians, three thousand Evertonians have just travelled down there tonight at a game eight o'clock kickoff in London on a Monday night that they won't get back to from till. Two o'clock in the morning, say. They spent a lot of money. They go everywhere. And you're asking them, and the people will come out and go, stick with us, stick with us. It's. It's. It's honestly, it's honestly, you know, I, I don't want to sit here, rant, like ranting and raving and, and, you know, doing one of those for the, you know, um, so it goes viral, or I, I just, I just don't. I, I look at, I look at the other teams, and I just think they've got. Forest have got better footballers. Luton have got more heart. You know, I, straight off the bat, I look at those, and I think that when people say about the two, about the two teams, Forest can score goals, and they've got. I think they've got individuals that can hit, and, and Luton have got. For what it's worth, they've got more heart than us. That to me tonight just showed those players just don't have any heart in them, and that's the worst thing I can I think you can say to a footballer that you don't have any heart. But they were beaten. They that, that team was beaten pretty early tonight, pretty early. There was no coming back from that at two nil, one nil, two nil. They were beaten, and that's the worst thing. That's the worst thing that can happen. To, a, to or that's the worst thing that you can be as a footballer is have no heart. You know, what does that say to the players? You know, what the, what what does what, you you know you know if you're a player and you're watching this video, which someone you know who knows they might I doubt it, but you know I've heard. I've heard people tell me they watch the player ratings and they're very disappointed when some when some they get some of the ratings. How can any how can how can any player walk off that pitch and think I've give all everything tonight? Honestly, any of any of them how can any of them walk off that pitch and think I've given everything tonight? I, I it wasn't good enough. It's unacceptable. Blah blah blah. But how can any of them say they've given 
everything. And every week I hear people tell me, oh, they work hard, or I hear dice, dice before the game. Well, you're going to see them work hard. That's what he said before the game. You're going to see them give everything. Did they give everything, Sean? Did they give everything tonight? Did they give everything? Because I didn't see them give everything. I didn't see any heart at all. Never mind anything else. I didn't see any heart. Because these players are poor. And I'm seeing all the... I'm seeing all the... I see all the comments. And I'm seeing people have a go at, like... You know, the typical people like people like having a go at. My, my question to, to people is... What do you do? What do you do with those players? What do you do when players are the best... Like, Onana for a start, like, was dreadful tonight. Deserved getting sagged off. Who plays instead of Onana? Just just tell me who plays instead of Onana. Because I could sit here all night and nobody could tell me who would play instead of Onana. He was dreadful tonight. Got the hook. Brilliant. The whole midfield. Ga- James Garner. Is this a Garner gay? Should be the first name on, this, on the team. She's unfortunately, he was holding his calf. Uh, sorry, his, I think he'd done his hamstring or his calf. Um... He, he to me is the number one player on the team sheet, but unfortunately he wasn't wasn't available. The right hand side is a major problem because Jack Harrison is being dreadful, and Ashley Young doesn't give you anything attacking wise. The only maybe bonus tonight, maybe Andre Gomez has played himself into the team. Maybe Andre Gomez and um, with a Disagana game, maybe. Because they weren't, because uh, he did all right, Gomez, when he came on. And it's just a kind of guy who should, for me, should start every game anyway. And I know he's got an injury. But tonight, all of those players were just, you know, were just woeful. Absolutely woeful. All of them, though. And as I said, when a manager comes out before the game and tells you you're going to get absolutely everything, well, we didn't get absolutely everything. Because I said it last week, and I'll say it again, and I don't care saying it, right? Running round a bit doesn't mean fucking anything. And I'm sick of people being praised like McNeil for running round when they're not good enough footballers for our football club. And yet people tell me they are, and they're not. Because they run around a bit. But what happens when they don't run around a bit? What happens when they can't run around a bit? These players are not good enough and yet continually told that they are because they run around a bit. And yet they didn't do it tonight even though the manager said that it would happen. That it would happen. It would happen. Absolutely, you know, dreadful. And I, and, I, and my I'm, my biggest concern is now we play what Sunday. Um... And fans, you know, again, as I said, be with us. The team better be ready. It's the biggest week, not just of this, not just of this season, but of um, many a season. You know, three home games doesn't matter if doesn't matter if one of them is um, Liverpool. By the way, it doesn't matter. It's about it's about what you do uh, on the, on the pitch. It's about giving absolutely everything. It's about, you know, winning every 50-50. Because that's, as a football team, that's all we've got now. That's all we've got. We've got, we haven't got any style. We haven't got any way of playing. Um, Every single player has to run through brick walls. Like they should anyway. You know, I made a joke on Twitter about um, about Deli Ali and about like you know being four three nil down four nil down and him him analysing at half time. I think some people who are uh, obviously stupid thought I was having a go with Deli Ali. I wasn't. I was having a go with the situation clearly, and just the joke that it is that we've got a player who's on a hundred thousand pound who hasn't played for two years is sitting in the studio and is going to analyse us, and that just says everything about this football club. It's got nothing to do with the player. Um, it's got absolutely nothing to do with the player. It's to do with the football club and the position he's, we've been put in. Um, 
you know, we we are, you know, Michelle was there tonight sitting next to um, Josh Wander's um, stunt double. You know, it was nice to see him actually go to a game. You know, he won't come to he won't come to Goodison, but it was nice to see him um, go to a game. Um, but what are they thinking? What are they thinking about the situation? You know, I I I don't know where the fan base is with Sean Dyche at the moment. Um, I don't know. I don't know what people. Um, whether people feel like he should be sacked, or whether people feel like he can't be sacked, or 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 people feel like he needs to be sacked right now, I, I don't I don't know I don't know. But you know you've got the current owner and and possibly the future owner sitting next to each other uh, while this is going on. You know what are they thinking? What are they going to do about it? Because it you know it just. You know, this, when we get to the back end of next week, we we are going to know basically what we have to do. Once we've played Brentford, we we're, we're gonna know massively what what the situation is. You know, we'll have Luton coming up in Sheffield United, and they're gonna take on even huge significance. Um, it's just, and it it would be I, I, I do are they even considering? Can they even consider the idea of sacking Sean Dyche? I really don't know. I just feel like I just feel like from what I've seen, most people um, feel like Sean Dyche is done. Because most people I look at when they look at the football just think the football is absolutely dreadful. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Dreadful football has to be winning football. It has to be. There's no way around it. And it doesn't matter when you look at the quality. You have to do something with the quality. You have to. You have to create a situation. Um That gets the most out of every single player. And he's not doing... The manager's not doing that. He's not doing that. And I think he's run out of... He looks like he's run out of ideas. Because tonight, what he did by sending us out to, to press them high was absolutely nuts in my eyes. Absolutely nuts. To send out players to basically go in, into a kamikaze style um, was nuts. Um, so, you know, if people want to go out there and get pictures with them and all the rest of it, feel free. But he's not somebody, he's not somebody, you know, saying that I can tolerate past the end of this season. If that, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite open about it. Is that I don't want Sean Dyche anywhere near this football club once this season ends. It's as simple as that. Um, now, a lot of people would say it should happen right now. I don't know whether it can happen right now. I really don't. And I don't know who who would you'd give the job to. But for me, he can't be the managing after the end of this season. Not with that football. Absolutely not. Because I look at players who've played under him, the likes of McNeil and the likes of Tarkowski, and even they look lost by it. They look like they are struggling to come to terms with what's going on. Um, you know, McNeil, McNeil needed dropping a long time ago. He offers absolutely nothing. And I think when Tarkowski's running around like a big headless chicken, it doesn't do anything for the team. It's a team in desperate need of leadership. And when one of your leaders is running around... Um, just trying to win his own little personal battles and kick shit out of people, then I just don't see how that's helpful. You know, nine bookings, picked up his ninth booking tonight. Um, I just don't see how that is helpful at all. So, um, 
I really don't. And I, I, I thought it was astonishing that he. I know he ended up having to make the sub because Patterson come off. Uh, was coming off, but I thought it was astonishing that he wasn't even going to give Dan Juma minutes. I really was. The fact that you you five 0 down in a game, the players being out for for two months, and you've got an opportunity to give someone just some minutes coming back into the prem in print of the Premier League, and you don't even give him any minutes. Um, I thought that was again his man management. I I just feel is absolutely fucking piss poor. He has his favourites, he picks his favourites, and he just ignores everybody else. Um, and as I said, I, I wouldn't have him anywhere near this club once the season's ended. If if Arteta is it Arteta, sorry, someone put Arteta in there. If David Moyes is available, Arteta might be available. If David Moyes is available, um, because he leaves West Ham, then he's the person I'd be going for. Simple as that. It'd be, I'd be I'd be straight there going for him. If West Ham don't want him or he doesn't want to stay at West Ham. Um because he's a man who can who who for me can move us forward over over a couple of years. Um whilst the club is still probably a mess. But I think we need somebody who has done it before. Um I don't think said loads of times, we're not ready for an up-and-coming manager or someone who needs everything to be perfect because the club is is a mess. The club is a mess and continues to be a mess. I mean, we're sitting we're sitting here and we there's a deadline at 12 o'clock for MSP and 777 and we don't even know um, whether it's going to get extended or, or what the situation is. The club is a fucking mess. And all you get is is that la 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 da la 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 from from the from from the club. It's just business is normal. Business is normal when you've got um a temporary CEO and a temporary board and a club that is just limping along with no leadership. Um and as a fan, you we just sit here and we just you know, they start the sky sport another Another, uh, you know, another week for another big week for Everton. Every week's a big week for Everton because of the shit we go through every single week. Um, someone needs to get hold of this club and give everybody at this club a big shake and lead us forward. Um, and as I said, that it'd be David Moyes for me if he's free in the summer. I don't know if he's staying at West Ham. They don't seem to want him. He doesn't seem to want to stay there either. Um, so that's the person I'd go because as I said I just don't think I just don't think we um, are in any position to um, to turn our nose up at someone like that But we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm sure there's still a lot of people out there who feel like he's doing a great job. But he isn't. But he isn't. He isn't doing a great job. Let's be honest. Um, but I do feel sorry for him at times when I see him on press conferences and stuff like that. And he's getting asked questions that other people at this football club should be getting asked. Um, so there are times when I just feel like, why is he answering this question about things that are going on off the pitch. But there's nobody, is there? Kevin Felwell doesn't speak, director of football, he doesn't speak. He said a few he said done a few interviews here on the season when things were starting to look a little bit better. But since it since it um since it went tits up he's just gone quiet again. Um It is really hard to know what's going to happen because next week, as I've said, or sorry, from Sunday, it's huge. It's just a huge week that really Everton need need at least five points from, really. They need five points going before they go to Luton, really. 
So, and as I said, there's, I've been seeing loads of names, loads of names come up in the comments as the manager. I I couldn't tell you who could come in, who could come in and get his wins. I really, I really couldn't. Because I think the style of play is so imprinted on these players and there's such little time to turn things round that it would just be it would just be moving the deck chairs, really. Um But sometimes who knows, sometimes that sometimes someone does come in and you do get that positive bounce. And maybe if it is for just a couple of games, it could be the bounce we need. I can't see it, I can't imagine um I can't imagine anything will change. Even after that, even after a result like that, I can't just can't see anything changing. It'll go deadly quiet for the next two or three days in terms of social media and what comes out of the club. And then there'll be the press conference where he'll just come out with his normal management speak. And then it'll be get behind the team. It's a massive game. Uh, it'll all be built up um, because it's, you know, us versus Forest. And it's the opportunity to make, you know, to create a four-point gap uh, or possibly go below them. But I know one thing, we fucked our goal difference tonight big time in terms, I think we're on the same goals as Forrest now. We had a, we had a decent advantage there. Um, meh. So, yeah, I, I'm a bit too numb to be going, you know, to be flipping on, on it. I'm a, I'm a bit too numb to it all. To be going, um, to be to be sort of ranting and raving because it's not, it's not something that a performance like that isn't something new to us. The perf- what's new to us is conceding that many goals. We've seen performances as bad as that, or not maybe not quite as bad as that. We've seen bad performances, but we just haven't conceded. Tonight, everything went in. And it's just been an absolutely terrible, terrible night. Um, yeah, so there you go, right? I am gonna go, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be back shortly to do my player ratings video. That should be fun. So um, yeah, st- stick around. Won't be too long till I come back and do that. Check out Baz's videos as well when they come out, and I'll see you in a little bit. See you later.